Tim, this is such a good tournament. Dude, so the reason why I'm really stoked about this tournament is these groups are so balanced, in my opinion. This is the most balanced I've ever seen a tournament in group stage for years. Yeah, uh, This is very rare. So, however DreamHack did this, they did it the right way. The fucking Roomba, of course, decides to go off, boys. Let me turn this motherfucker off, dude. So yeah, like I was saying, this tournament's pretty sick because the groups are quite even. They did a very good job of dispersing the top teams amongst these four groups. So basically what it means is we're going to get a sick bracket stage, which is kind of hard to come by. You know, that one side isn't going to be very lopsided. It almost guarantees that neither side of the bracket is going to be lopsided. Unless, of course, you have like major, major upsets. Like the only way that would happen is if you know Renegades comes out of Group B and Boot DS comes out of Group A. It's the only way we're gonna have a shitty bracket stage, right? Yeah, because and they both end up on the same side of the bracket. Because even if one ended up on one side of the bracket, it's not like that makes that side of the bracket shitty. There's still still gonna be three insane teams on that side. So, all right, let's see what we got here. So to kick it off, we're gonna have SK playing against Boot DS. Let's go just group by group. SK playing against Boot DS. SK is gonna win that. C9 versus North. This is gonna be like a really really good test for the new Cloud9 lineup. Tim has been missing. They're not going to have much practice. Tim is also not going to be able to play much before this event. Uh, I think I'm guessing Tim's back by now. So they might be able to like plow out a couple maps. And if I were Cloud9, if I were Cloud9 right now, I would look at this group and I would say our only goal is to not lose to North. Because that's all I got to do to advance unless this Boot DS team is nuts. I don't know much about this Boot DS, boot DS team, you know? But all C9 needs to do, and same for North really, unless SK falters, is beat the other one. I mean, SKs look shaky online, but SK always shows on land. Always, dude. You can't, you can't assume those guys aren't getting out of this group. They're getting out for sure. So if I were Cloud9 with this new lineup, I practice the maps that North doesn't want to play, and I dictate the veto. You know, uh, you have to obviously veto Nuke when you play North. Um, but typically you would see C9 ending up on, you know, maybe like a cobble against North. Don't do that. Don't end up on cobble, dude. Please don't end up on cobble. Uh, North looks pretty strong lately on cobble. I wouldn't fuck with them on that map. I think Cloud9 could take Mirage against them. I think Cloud9 could take Inferno against them. I think Cloud9 could take Cash against them. Overpass, I'd probably lean north. Train is like the flip flop map, and north doesn't really play much train. Yeah. So if C9 can go into this tournament with those four maps, they're gonna fucking win against north. You know, if they can, if they do that, they will be beat north. With that being said, I I think on those four maps in particular, like I think specifically they could beat them on Inferno. I know Cloud9 is pretty good on Inferno. But I don't like how they played big. We watched that demo on stream a couple days ago. They played so passive in Banana. It was, it was really bad. I think they were tilting super super hard because the tournament wasn't running smoothly. That was when Stu was tweeting some shit. So uh, hopefully they can brush that off. Um, I, I think they could beat North. I do. Uh, but North has been playing well. I'm going to go with it. So I think Kana may beat North. And even if they lose to him, I think beat, playing them, oh, they're going to have to play them in a best of three, though. Oh, that's that's not good. That's not good. Oof. That's not good, boys. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, so unless C9 2 owes their way out of this group by beating North and SK, when they play North in a best of three, assuming North loses to SK, they might be in big fucking trouble. North could fuck with... Inferno, Cobbler, Nuke. And I don't think with C9's little time together as a team and Tim being gone, that they can hang on those three maps right now. I think C9 is going to beat North in the initial best of one. I do. I don't know if they can beat SK, but they do have a heavy advantage in knowing how SK plays. And that will benefit them a lot. Especially with the the momentum they have as being a new team, having that new team smell. Dude, C9 could literally 2-0 this group. But if they don't 2-0 it, they're in big trouble. If they force themselves to play best of threes against those two teams, they're in big trouble. 
So I, th I have them beating North in the initial matchup, but then eventually I do I have to go with SK North advancing. I don't know. Group B, Astralis VP, Navi Renegades. Uh, Astralis is going to be Renegades first match. I think Navi is going to be VP. I rewatched a lot of the VP demos from the major, and their strats are nuts. Their strats are really fucking nuts. But I think individually they're not playing with the same confidence they used to play with, and it it punishes them a lot, honestly. Like their players aren't making the same individual plays on rounds that they used to, and they're not getting entries like they used to. Um, so I have Navi beating VP in that first game. Then we have Navi versus Astralis. I don't know. I I just think Astralis is too good, man. Like they're such a good team. Knowing how prepared they were at the major, I mean this is a month later and they have the same players, you know. They have they have the same shit that they had at the major and they probably didn't even get to show, you know, forty percent of that stuff because they expected themselves to get further than they did. You know, they expected to probably win it in their mind. So um I think they have a lot of shit up their sleeve, and I think being that Navi is a pretty new team, I would give Astralis the advantage uh, in the rematch between VP and Navi. I think Navi wins the best of three. So when Navi plays VP in a best of three, VP has like Cobble and Nuke up their sleeve. And I mean, the old Navi without Zeus was not very good on Cobble. Zeus notoriously has always made teams very good on Cobble, but can he do it that quick? Damn, that's another really close series. This is the, yeah, in a best of three, this is like very 50 50. I'd say like the skill pushes Navi ahead in this series. Um, Zeus probably has a lot to prove to him, like to himself that he can make this team super successful now. Uh, he's probably very happy that they want him back. Probably working very hard at this boot camp. Uh, all the players are super motivated and probably riding a little bit of a high right now. I have to say, Navi wins that series. I'm going to go Astralis, Navi advancing on to Group B. Group C, Gambit, Mouse Sports to kick it off. Uh, I swear, I honestly think Mouse Sports is a very underrated team right now. Um, but they had that roster change, so I don't know how they're going to look right after it. But they were very organized in the last couple tournaments I've watched them. They do everything very smoothly, and it, I can tell these guys have practiced a lot in, in their own server, you know, like not scrims. Whereas before you'd watch mouse sports and you'd be like, these guys look like they played a lot of scrims and they know how to react off of things, but they don't have a lot of set set stuff that they do. That's way different now. I think whoever their coach is, I think it's like L LMBT, I think that guy has probably done wonders for this team. I know nothing about him, but um, unless all the players just had like a come to Jesus moment, uh, I think that guy is doing some fucking crazy shit behind the scenes that I don't know about. Like he's prepping these guys really well. So I actually would have Mouse Sports. Both these teams have had roster changes. I would have Mouse Sports walking away from this with the win. Nip and Phase. I think at this stage, man, like no one's stopping Phase right now. They are riding like the ultimate high. These this, these players on that on Phase think that. You know, no one can touch them because they are the most skilled players. The only way they don't advance out of this group is if something happens where, you know, they play train and they're so cocky that they're trying to pick into places constantly without pulling rotations, without doing anything to help each other. That's the only way things fall apart, you know, as if people get picked in team mid and then it's like a 4v5 every round or people get picked in brown hall because they're not using utility properly. The only thing that's going to hurt FaZe is that, you know, a bad T side. These guys aren't going to get dominated on a CT side, even if they lose pistol. Like, they will grind out rounds with that lineup. So, yeah, got to give that to FaZe. So, then we have Nip versus Gambit for my lower match. So, I'm going to pick Nip for this lower bracket match. But here's my reasoning, right? So, an in-game leader like Zeus is going to make sure that oppers don't dominate the fuck out of his team. Right, I know that Zeus is on is on Navi now. I'm I'm kind of starting my my reasoning for picking Nip by stating all this is I think Oppers are gonna have more success against Gambit than they did previously, and based on how aggressive I've seen Draken, 
uh, and it, when four is second ops sometimes, uh, they could really pick them apart if they get sloppy. So then, in my upper bracket match, I have phase versus mouse sports. I phase winning that. So then we have mouse sports versus nip, and uh, I kind of have to pick mouse sports to advance, man. Based on like the, the shit I've seen and like how they move around the map, I think phase and mouse sports advance from group C. It's gonna be a big tournament for mouse sports in my opinion. Like as far as achievements go, you know, like this is gonna be. If mouse sports advance out of this group, it's probably like one of the the best things that mouse sports has done in a long time. And I think they're they're ready to do that. Like I really do. Um, that's why, in particular, for this last YouTube video, I broke down their plat take just to show like how coordinated some of the things that mouse sports has been doing going on. Group D. Immortals versus Fnatic. Holy fuck, dude. If if Fnatic kept their lineup, I feel like these two teams are like the same type of team. Uh, I think with the new lineup, Fnatic's going to struggle. I think Immortals has a lot of different things they do to open up rounds. Uh, they're not necessarily tactically deep, but they're willing to fucking get real grimy. They're willing to just throw the fucking strap book out the window and just have people make plays. And Fnatic's that team too, but now they have two new players. So it's very hard to do that without the kind of cohesion uh, and knowledge of rotations that you would have you know, with the old Fnatic lineup. G2 versus Envious. So Envious just beat G2 online, but um, I can't see them losing to G2 at this LAN in this game. I can't. It's like, it's like little brother versus bigger brother, you know? The envious players are going to go into that match, like, kind of feeling like the underdog. G2 is going to go into that match feeling super confident. Uh, and something I've noticed about French teams is when they feel super confident, they're going to, like, peak you way more aggressively. They're going to make plays. So if envious plays a passive style and punishes that, they might be able to walk away with a win. But I can't. I can't pick them. Can't. So yeah, G2 advances. And then we have G2 versus Immortals. Holy fuck, that's a good match. Both teams are down to play Cobble. Both teams are down to play Inferno. Immortals going to ban Nuke from G2. Train a little bit of a wild card. Both teams could potentially even pick Cash. If they wanted to, either of them could. G2 has the edge on Overpass. So on a best of three, I think G2 should pick Overpass. I'm going to edge towards G2 in that game. We would have Fnatic versus Envious. I think based on the fact that Fnatic has a new lineup and Envious is one of those teams that can play Nuke. I mean, playing Nuke is a strong thing to have in a best of three series because you basically dictate the other team's veto if they don't play Nuke or don't, don't play it well. Um, and I think Envious would dominate Fnatic if they played them on Nuke. So I think Fnatic might have to veto that. Envious also plays Cobble really well. Interesting. Yeah, have to go with the Envious, man. Um, so then we have Envious against Immortals. I think Immortals takes that. Because so I think Immortals is a better Cobble team. I think Immortals is a better Cash team. I think Immortals could just do what they do on Inferno. Like, I don't even know what Immortals does on Inferno, man. They just send any into Banana and he just kills people. Yeah. So I have Immortals coming out second. There you go. Group A, I think I picked SK North. Group B, I picked Astralis, Navi. Group C, I picked FaZe, Mouseboards. Group D, I have G2 and Immortals. That's it. Holy fuck, that, that took a long time. Shit.